My name is Jake Matthew and I worked in Alan Liu's lab as a part of the SURE program this summer. The long-term goal of our lab is to create artificial platelets. A platelet is a very simple cell that does not contain a nucleus. It serves as a good candidate to be created artificially so that blood clotting can be triggered upon injury. My work dealt with the mechanoactivation of the artificial platelet. Platelets are constantly circulating throughout the body. When there is a break in the endothelium, the platelets bind to collagen and encounter molecules that trigger their activation, and they begin to clot and block the hole. In order to mimic the activation and function of platelets in synthetic cells, we need to incorporate proteins into the membrane of our artificial cells. One important protein is a channel membrane protein called MSCL. This channel protein will open when the membrane is under tension, which we have shown in mammalian cells by applying hypoosmotic shock. Opening the channel in our artificial platelets allows molecules such as calcium ions to enter the cell and begin the activation process. But first we must make very simple artificial cells called vesicles. Our lab has developed multiple techniques to make giant unilamellar vesicles, or GUVs. One method of making GUVs is based on generating double emulsion. We construct a double emulsion generation device using very tiny glass capillaries that make up the injection tube and collection tube. We create an inner and outer phase of sucrose solution and a middle phase made of lipids. As the three phases enter the device and pass through the capillaries, they form vesicles with the inner phase inside of a lipid bilayer surrounded by the outer phase. Some advantages of using double emulsion include the ability to make GVs of a uniform size and the ability to produce a large amount of GVs. It is also compatible with complex interfaces with multiple proteins, for example. The downsides to double emulsion are that it is time consuming and can be difficult to set up. Another technique of making GUVs is called electroformation. We use ITO glass slides that are conductive on one side and spread the lipids onto the conductive side, creating a lipid film. We then make a chamber using two slides with a rubber spacer and copper tape in contact with the conductive surface. The chamber is then filled with a sucrose solution just like in double emulsion and alternating current is run through the chamber. Electroformation is a relatively quick and easy process compared to double emulsion. However, the GVs made by electroformation are not uniform size and it is difficult to incorporate complex interfaces into GVs. Now that we have made vesicles, we can focus on the protein. MSCL is a protein used by bacteria to prevent the cell from lysis during osmotic downshock. We can purify or isolate MSCL by taking it out of the bacteria. In order to do this, we introduce the MSCL DNA to bacteria called E. coli. We then grow the bacteria until we have a large amount and induce the expression of MSCL. Once the bacteria express MSCL, we lyse the bacteria by sonication. The sample is spun in a centrifuge to get rid of cellular debris. We then run the samples through an affinity column so that the protein will bind to the column and the unwanted proteins will flow through. To check if we have purified the protein, we run gel electrophoresis. A gel can separate what's in a sample by the size of the molecules. Because we know the size of MSCL, we know where it should appear in the gel, so we can check to see if our samples contain MSCL. We attempted to incorporate our purified MSCL into our GVs. In order to test that the MSCL was in the membrane, we labeled the MSCL with a dye, and afterward observed the GVs under a confocal fluorescence microscope. Unfortunately, our results did not turn out as expected. The MSCL was found in the lumen of the GVs instead of localized at the membrane. But as I learned this summer, there are always multiple ways to tackle a problem, and our work does not stop here. We are currently working on approaches to solve the issues with incorporating MSCL into GUVs. Creating artificial platelets could potentially replace blood transfusions to remedy bleeding disorders. There are still many steps to complete, but every day we move closer to our goal.